So Junction City, or people like to, JC or Junk City is what commonly we refer to, um, is sister missionaries. We actually covered a ward that was there and a branch. And it's really weird because the branch is basically a donut hole, is the best way to describe it in the ward boundary. It's the bulk of the actual city of Junction City, a little bit of Fort Riley, and then the ward boundaries are much spread out and much bigger. And the reason for that is because of how highly militarized this city is. It's connected to a very dependent on Fort Riley. And so most of probably about 75, 80% of the members in the ward and in the branch are either active duty or retired military. And so that was in itself a huge like culture adjustment because the military definitely has its own culture. And so that was something that you, you definitely learn. And after a while, a couple of weeks of being there, you start realizing that you are throwing out all these acronyms that if people aren't military or aren't serving in the same area as you like, they're like, what, what are you talking about? You're like, oh, right. What does that even stand for? <laughs> Cause you just get so used to using military acronyms and military time as well, which was kind of cool. The town itself is quite kind of poor and run down. Cause even those who are military, um, don't necessarily, most of the people who are living there are renting their homes because they're only going to be there for like two, three years while they're stationed there. And so there's a reason that it's called Junk City. <laughs> but there are still some like really cool like older homes that are in Junction City that were really cool. It was also really cool being on the on on post. It was slightly odd. It felt a little bit like being in the Truman Show where you have all of these basically identical houses that are like perfectly distanced from each other. It's just it was really interesting to see the uniform nature of how they structure an army post. And as part of our work, we did a lot in that area with working with less actives. And so we spent a lot of time actually going on post. We went on post almost every single day, which was really cool to be able to like experience that and to be able to really understand so much more about what it's like to be in the military and not just to be a soldier in the military, but to be the child of someone who's in the military or a wife and to really understand like what they have to sacrifice to be part of that because when your husband's in the military or your father you really basically you are part of the military family and you sacrifice almost as much as they do to be part of that and to defend the country it's really it was really eye-opening for me that we actually had different roles that we had to follow when we were on on Fort Riley there's a very strict no proselyting rule and so as missionaries we were allowed to go and knock on the door of anyone that was a member or anyone that had actively like invited us to come and to teach them but we were not allowed to approach anyone and so to be really careful that like we couldn't even like wave to people or like ask them just like general questions like oh how are you today because that would be considered proselyting and if we were caught proselyting we could be kicked off the post and that could act and all missionary activity could be banned from being able to happen on Fort, on Fort Riley. And so it was, so that was really hard to adjust to because you're used to, it's like talk to everyone and it's, it required a lot more patience because you had to be much more actively engaging the members in the work. I mean like talk to your neighbors because if they invited us to dinner or like over for some reason and they had friends that were there that were not members, we could approach them if it was in their home but outside we could not. And so it was, we were very much forced to depend on, on working with members, which was really cool too, because it was so neat to be able to get, to see them be involved and to see how they responded to missionary work. And a lot of those members, because they move so quickly, they were very missionary minded because they don't have this like, oh, I have forever to like approach this neighbor to become friends with them. They know that they only have a couple of years or less. And so they're a lot more willing to, really step in there and like help, help us out. It was very interesting to see how like military families worked because when the dad was there, like it was kind of normal, like, you know, normal-ish hours, depending on what their um, job was in the army. But when they were deployed, it was so interesting where you had these families that were basically functioning as single parent families. And it was something that I really saw, it really like made or broke someone's testimony because if they were strong in their faith, 
then they would turn to other members of the ward to help support them and to help support their family when their, their husband or their, their wife is deployed. But if they weren't strong, then when their spouse deployed, they would fall and they'd pull away from the church and they'd kind of, they'd try and do it on their own. And it was so interesting to see how different the families were that like pulled to the church and really like used it to strengthen them and their families, like how much happier and much more like peaceful and just, like you could just feel the difference in their home. Like in an even more extreme out level, I feel like then just like with average citizens with non-military. So that was like really, really interesting to see. I think for me, one of the most special things that happened was just the amount of miracles we saw in Junction City. And I were like praying, we're like, my parents was like, hey, we gotta go out, we gotta, we just gotta start walking and just talk to everyone. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna trust that you're right about this. And so we went out and it was, it was like mind blowing. We, we had a goal to talk to, it was like 20 people and like 10 people we'd never met before. And, and so it was like, we started walking. We just like had these like crazy things where like we ran into a girl, we like said hi and passed her. She didn't like say anything and they get about 10 feet past the storm. She spins around and goes, wait, are you Mormon? And we're like, yes. It turns out she'd actually been baptized a couple months before in Arizona had just moved to Junction City. So that was really cool. And then towards the end, it's like getting dark. And we were like, we only need three more people to meet our goal. We're like, maybe we'll like knock on a door and find a family of three. And so we're like, okay, which door? We're like, well, that door has its front porch light on. So it'll be really safe. It'll be good. So we knock on it. The door opens and it's like, these people look really familiar. I'm like, oh, hello, sisters. Come in, come in. And then it dawns on us that their family that actually lives back door to some members in our ward and they'd actually invited them to come to church and they'd come about a month earlier and they'd kind of liked it, but they weren't really all that interested. And it was so interesting just to be like, the last house that we knocked on, we needed to talk to three more people and they let us in. And it, everything for them, it's like they really, at that point, like started to really listen to us. And it was like that next week, they came to general conference and within a month they ended up getting baptized as a family and it was just so cool to see how the faith of my companion in that moment of if we just go out and just start walking, God's gonna put people in our path, led to so many different miracles that evening.